Hey everybody, welcome back to Friends You Can Grow With. I'm your host, Matt Nespri. Sitting down with me today, some friends that I have known for years and, and I'm very excited to have on the podcast. We have Jim Eby and we have Michael and Valina Perry. Um, so we'll start as always by letting them introduce yourselves. Jim, why don't you start us off? Yep. So my name is James Eby. My friends call me Jim, so you can call me Jim. And uh, I've lived several lifetimes. I've lived a long time. <laughs> I lived a lifetime in youth and Christian education as a pastor, as a trainer of uh, national leaders overseas, as an overseer of churches. But right now I'm doing what I was called to do. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, I, I didn't really enter into the fullness of my calling until I was about 55 years mm -hmm. of age. Mm -hmm. So that ought to be encouraging <laughs> to someone. Yeah. Yeah. But my ministry <clears throat> is focused on unreached people, mm -hmm. the people who have never yet heard the gospel. Mm -hmm. More than three billion mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. who have never heard even one time about Jesus. And what we do is train the nationals, the indigenous people, how to evangelize more effectively, how to plant churches, and how to target these unreached peoples who have never before heard the gospel. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing that for going on 22 years mm -hmm. now. And we have trained over 150,000 wow. national mm -hmm. pastors, church planters, mm -hmm. and uh, missionaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's wow. what I do. I travel in an area that we call the unreached world. Mm -hmm. The area where the majority of the people live who have never heard about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. Yeah, that's super interesting. And Michael <laughs> Valina, why don't you introduce yourselves, tell us what you guys do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first, it's just a, a joy to be here with you, Jim, and you, and Matt. I uh, have too. such admiration mm -hmm. for the work of Mission Catalyst and Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. what you've built through that. Uh, my name is Michael and my wife, Valina. Uh, I started out uh, my career as a PGA member uh, working and managing golf courses. Hmm. And uh, after seven years of that, the Lord called us into the mission field. And we spent 10 years as missionaries in Honduras uh, <coughs> running a safe home for teenage girls who had been victims of trafficking and abuse. Uh, it was called Casa de Esther. And through that process, we established a nonprofit uh, called Radiate Coalition. Huh. And... Uh, just completed 10 years in the mission field and, and some based in the U.S. and, and traveling abroad. And uh, we've just entered into a new season for our family with four young children be, being a little mm -hmm. more stationed here. Mm -hmm. uh, so currently I'm working as a consultant and coach for small businesses who have a kingdom mindset, want to mm -hmm. use what God has given them to steward that for his kingdom and also working with nonprofits to help yeah. accomplish their vision and their leaders to, to stay healthy in the long run. Yeah. That's Amen. awesome. Yeah, and uh, like Michael said, 10 years on the mission field, we're now home right now. We know that the Lord's called us back for this time to really uh, focus on discipling our children and mm -hmm. making a difference right here, being missional Amen. where God's planted us, mm -hmm. um, taking everything that we've learned from being on the mission field and, and applying it right here. Yeah, Loving our kids, loving our community, um, giving, serving here. I also work at our kids school founders classical academy and it has been an incredible blessing to be there uh not something i ever thought that i would step into uh the school world <laughs> yeah but my goodness it's so necessary to yeah, be absolutely. in a place mm -hmm. where kids need love yeah. they mm -hmm. need people yeah. that believe in them they need a smile they need a hug because a lot of them are going through stuff that is really heavy mm -hmm. and a lot of it I've shared with Michael, <clears throat> it's very similar to the stuff that we faced on the mission field. Mm, yeah. A lot of trauma, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. Yeah. So God's prepared us. God <laughs> has used so many situations to help us right where we are right mm, now. Yeah. He's equipped us and he's continuing to equip us and we are very grateful. That we're very powerful. grateful to be here. That's yeah. so good. 
And I mean, you guys have both all hit on the topic we're going to hit today, and that is we're talking about <coughs> missions. Yeah. Um, so as always, I think it's great to start with a definition of what we're talking about when we say the word missions. Um, Jim, you alluded to it a little bit. Why don't you tell us when you what is missions? When a when yeah. a churchgoer, when a okay. non churchgoer hears the word missions, what okay. should they think? To me, missions is simply doing what Jesus told us mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the very last thing Jesus said to us was go into all the world mm -hmm. and make Disciples. disciples of all nations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The word nations in the Bible doesn't really mean countries. It means people groups. Mm -hmm. And there are more than 17,000 different people groups in the world. And, and that's what Jesus told us to do. Go make disciples of all of those people groups. And what I find interesting is that's the very last thing he told mm -hmm. us before he left. And I would assume that last words are important. <laughs> yeah. With your last mm -hmm. words, you don't talk about your favorite football team or tell the latest <laughs> joke. You know, you tell what's on your heart. Mm -hmm. And that was what was on Jesus's heart. Mm -hmm. And then in Acts, that, that's Matthew 28, 18 to 20, which we call the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. And Chuck Swindoll said, whatever you do, don't call it the Great Suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a suggestion. No. It's yeah. his command. Mm -hmm. And then in Acts 1, 8, just as Jesus was rising in, in front of the people to go to heaven, he, he told them again, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be witnesses mm -hmm. of me. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, mm -hmm. the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's what missions is, yeah. is just doing what Jesus told us, mm -hmm. didn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love you bring up the story in Acts. That's one of my favorite stories of when the Holy Spirit, we call yeah. it the day of Pentecost comes yeah. and they're filled with the spirit yeah. and they start speaking in all these other languages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what the people in the city say mm -hmm. is, how are we able to understand yeah. them? They're all speaking our language, mm -hmm. telling us the glories of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you say that's an accurate description of what you guys have done around the world? Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the point is, to your point, wh why was he saying that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why, why was he sending right. the Spirit? Mm -hmm. Well, he was sending the Spirit to enable us yes. to do what he had called us to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, to yeah. me, that's it. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And you guys have been around the world in several different countries. What are some of the places you guys have been? And maybe give us some stories because it's always good for us to hear. You know, we here in America can often be so um, desensitized to sure. what's going on around the mm -hmm. world. I mean, may have even been a shock for listeners to know that there are people who have never heard yeah. the gospel because yeah. yeah. that seems so foreign to mm -hmm. us. Um, mm -hmm. So tell us where yeah. you guys have been and, and maybe some stories from that. Sure. Um, you know, we spent most of our time in Honduras, mm -hmm. but uh, along the way, and even before that, you know, for me, mission started out uh, growing up and mm -hmm. uh, started in my local community in San Antonio. And, and it wasn't always something like I wanted to do, but it was something that our family got involved in. And mm -hmm. I think that was a really wow. important thing because it brought in my perspective mm -hmm. to see, you know, it, my perspective of the world was made bigger through that to my community. And then mm. as I got older, it was a mission trip to Eastern Tennessee and saw poverty there that absolutely blew my mind mm. that didn't, I didn't realize that existed here in the U S uh, as I got a little bit older, it was some short term trips to Mexico and El Salvador. And, and then as even older along the way, went to Honduras and through the years have been able to travel to Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, Uganda was such an incredible trip. That was a connection that there was a missionary who came to serve with us in Honduras mm -hmm. and saw the work that was being done there and was like, I know uh, there's a need for this training there in Uganda. Could you come with us? Mm -hmm. And we said, it'd, it'd be an honor. And so we were able to take our directors from Honduras to travel 
to Uganda and walk into uh, the church building in Uganda mm-hmm. to see Christian and to see Don Schrock and mm-hmm. like, wait a second. There's people from the Ark Church. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. <laughs> like what are you guys doing here? Right. What just yeah. so happened that Project Playground was opening a playground that Sunday at this church. Wow! And then come to find out that church pastor was raised up and discipled by Jim. Huh. <laughs> so to travel halfway around the world, yeah, <laughs> jet lag to a whole different country, feel like you're in somewhere uh, completely new, but then to see people that you do life with every day, that was uh, a yeah. very cool experience. Uh, and then, but to see then also what that trip planted, uh, fast forward years later, uh, just last year, mm-hmm. Project Playground was able to bring a team down to Honduras mm-hmm. uh, because we saw the impact that it had in the community there in Uganda. <coughs> and we believed, wow, could we do this in Honduras? And so mm-hmm. we were able to bless three incredible partners of relationships we had done, uh, developed through the years in Honduras and to get to do that as a family mm-hmm. alongside members from the ark who came down mm-hmm. and to partner with project playground and other ministry of the ark mm-hmm. it was just incredible yeah. to, to do that and to do life together and then mm-hmm. to come back and still get to do life together and ministry together yeah. missions together every yeah. day that to me is embodies part of what missions is you yeah know, that that Amen. we all have different giftings we all have different talents we all have different skill sets mm-hmm. but it's all together you know christ prayer was that we be made perfect perfected in unity mm-hmm. so that the world may know yeah. that yeah. the father sent the son mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Amen. the purpose uh, the mission behind it but uh, all coming together and, and just seeing the body of christ in action and uh, to be able to do it alongside mm-hmm. my wife and best friend it's you mm-hmm. know we you want to talk about when we went in the mission field and that adventure? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's a bit of a story, but um, we met here. Uh-huh. Uh, I came down from Colorado, started uh, to work in the youth ministry here. And the weekend that I was visiting, I met Michael. And um, the Lord spoke to me when we met that he would be in my life for a really long time. And I doubted it. I wasn't sure what that meant, um, but I knew that there was something there. <clears throat> We had some rules in the ministry that we couldn't date, and um, which was, at the time, I was like, I'm an adult. I can do what I want. <laughs> but at the same time, what I came to learn was that it was about obedience, mm-hmm. trusting yeah. the Lord, mm-hmm. obeying yeah. his authority. Mm-hmm. And as I took that on and really um, matured in that, I started to see that if I want to obey the Lord, there's blessing after that. Mm-hmm. If... I want to get further in my life and grow and mature in these areas. I've got to trust his ways. I've got to understand that his ways are beyond what Mm -hmm. I can see, my perspective. Mm -hmm. They're so much greater. And through that process, we were able to date, but we founded our relationship on being obedient to Mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. And through that obedience, when the opportunity came to go to Honduras, because it was right in between Mm -hmm. our engagement, um, Mm -hmm. that we were... Uh, Friends of ours were uh, taking our engagement pictures, and they happened to be missionaries in Mm -hmm. Honduras at the time. Hmm. They said, why don't you guys just get married and move to Honduras? And we're like, no. Uh, uh, We'll we'll pray about it. Sure, we'll pray about that. (laughs) Famous Um, last words. Yeah. But (laughs) we we couldn't shake it. That small Mm -hmm. sentence, we could not shake. And Mm -hmm. God was using it in our minds, in our hearts, to stir something up. And from that point on... Through our engagement, we were like, we've got it, we've got to go and like seek this yeah. out. So shortly after we got married, <laughs> and then a month in two months after we got married, we took our first trip <clears throat> to visit. We took our first said, trip. The Lord said Honduras he was making it very clear uh-huh. it's Honduras. And so we went down in obedience to go visit and you know, on the plane ride, we looked at each other back and it was like, okay, that's going to be our home. Huh. Yeah, we knew. Now we didn't, we thought maybe our home six months from now, but. <laughs> but it ended up being the next month. Yeah. So wow. three months after we got married, we moved to the mission field. Wow. And so many incredible mm-hmm. things happened in between that time that only God could have mm-hmm. done. Yeah, but we weren't, we weren't, uh, I would not say that we were incredibly like uh, of our own doing equipped, qualified. But it was just the yes of obedience. The Lord was saying, now is the time you need to go. And as we look back, we can see the why and his bigger picture, Mm -hmm. you know, but it's that uh, step of obedience in the moment of trusting and Mm -hmm. like that, what he is calling you into, 
whether he's calling you into a conversation, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't mean necessarily <laughs> going to another country. Right. It may just mean striking up a conversation yeah. with the person next to you mm -hmm. or, you know, going in, uh, across the street to talk to your neighbor or mm -hmm. whatever it be. Um, but just that yes of obedience, he, he works with that and yeah. does mighty things mm -hmm. through his, to his glory. That's yeah. So cool. in, in terms of traveling, you know, God gives me the privilege of traveling <laughs> yeah. all over the yes. world. Yeah. I've been to just over 60 countries, but as I said earlier, my travels mostly are in what we call the unreached world. Mm -hmm. So I travel in <clears throat> India, Pakistan, China, Bangladesh, Nepal, mm -hmm. Indonesia, mm -hmm. and in some African countries. We have work in Ethiopia, DR Congo, <clears throat> um, Uganda, mm -hmm. and in Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. in Vietnam. So wow. I love the opportunities yeah. God mm -hmm. has given me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And it sounds like the, the common factor between what all of you guys are saying is, is obedience seems to be the That's first it. kind of mm -hmm. step or qualifier, if you will. Do, would you say growing up that missions or, or even foreign missions was something that was big on your heart that you felt like I was going to go far away mm -hmm. and to people I don't know? Growing up, did you have that sense in you at all? I don't think I I did, but there was exposure when I was 14 mm -hmm. to uh, go on a trip to Guatemala. Uh -huh. I thought it was impossible and also kind of crazy because there was a group from our church that was willing to take 25 junior high students. Oh, Lord. Anywhere. With, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a trip yeah. wherever you yeah. go. <laughs> With five adults, one of those being a doctor and the other two, you know, other four um, pastors and volunteers. But for some reason, I just felt like that was what I needed to do. Hmm. We didn't have the means, the money financially to do that. Mm -hmm. But I had a deep desire in my heart. I wanted to go. <clears throat> I wanted to see. I wanted to know what it was like outside of my little Colorado mountain town. Mm -hmm. And what God did there, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> what God did there was completely transform my life. Mm -hmm. And again, it was a step of obedience, and I see that now. Hmm. Even at 14, God put that in my life to be exposed. And from that moment, after I returned, my parents were like floored. You're so different. Mm -hmm. The Lord really moved in my heart there. I remember crying over a stump, just completely yeah. overwhelmed with God's love and his mm. desire for my life, and I couldn't ever shake that. And still, those those things come up. The Lord gave me vision there for stuff that has happened in my life and more to come. And I fully trust that. And if hadn't if it hadn't been for somebody with the crazy idea to take twenty five <laughs> junior high students, I mean, and and willing hearts, mm -hmm. no, I would not have. Yeah, I would not be who I am today because yeah. of it. So, I think early exposure is so important, and yeah. it's not. Um, it can seem scary and daunting for sure. Yeah. But at the same time, that's where faith mm -hmm. yeah. comes yeah. in. It goes beyond and our perspective shifts and we call them sometimes faith fuelers oh, when we yeah. go through those moments of, wow, that was completely the Lord helping, helping me and fueling this moment, fueling yeah. who I am now. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. <clears throat> I, uh, there was a missionary who came and spoke at the school. I, I went to a, a Christian school in, um, fifth grade and he talked about missions he was doing in India. And I remember, uh, it just, it amazed me, you uh -huh. know, to hear what, I mean, people being brought back to life, uh, yeah. hearing about spiritual warfare and, yeah. uh, demon affliction. And, and that just planted a curiosity of, okay, there's a, a, a a bigger purpose and, and uh, things going on around the world that mm -hmm. I have no idea about, yeah. but just how amazing to see uh, what the Lord was doing through that faithful man. Um, but as I shared, my you know my I had a heart for international missions and, and went on a lot of short term trips, but uh, and even almost went right after uh, university, almost left my career to go into the mission field. Hmm. But the Lord said, no, no, stay. I, I mean, I had written my letter of resignation. I had applied for a missions program. And then mm -hmm. the Lord said, okay, now stay. 
And part of that was what he spoke to me was golf was it is still a passion of mine, but uh, he wanted me to hold it with an open hand. Hmm. And uh, he said, make that your mission field. Mm -hmm. So something that's very secular, popular, relational, um, make that my mission field Mm -hmm. uh, where uh, the, while it may look from my title was general manager or golf pro people, it wasn't missionary, (laughs) but it was going and building relationship intentionally with those who would walk through the door, (coughs) Mm -hmm. whatever time of day, whatever situation, the people that I worked with had the opportunity to to serve with. Uh, But it was, also with an understanding that there may come a time where he says, okay, now I'm calling you and I don't want you to be holding on to it so tightly that when I do call you, you're not willing to give it up. Mm, and yeah. so, um, it was seven, almost seven years, uh, from when I, that time to when he called us into the mission field. But when we got into the mission field about three months in, we went through some challenging situations, some, uh, had to walk through a drastic budget cut mm-hmm. and what, he spoke to me in that for my personal role in that was the seven years that I spent in golf management. And I had been doing a very similar thing with golf courses that were struggling to help them, uh, rebuild their staff, get back to profitability. I was just going to get to do for the kingdom with a hmm. much bigger purpose. Uh, with that was my skill set, and then coming alongside getting to do that with my wife and what he had uh, gifted her with. And then with our staff in country, those, and being able to walk alongside the incredible disciples in mm. country and see the giftings and talents that the Lord has given them. It's, you know, first Peter four ten talks about, uh, the skill sets that we've been given and using those for the purpose of his kingdom and his glory. And it's just a picture of that, of, um, missions was is not just international it's missions is where you are it's missions Mm, yeah looks different i mean what Mm -hmm. jim does is so uniquely different in a way than what we do but it still has that same vein running through Mm -hmm. that and Mm -hmm. that is introduction to relationship with jesus christ Mm -hmm. yeah and discipleship yeah i i can't say that i don't think missions was even on my radar Mm -hmm. you know as a a young person i grew up in church but I didn't really surrender my life to mm. Jesus till I was a senior in high school. Mm. And of course, that changed my life. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I guess my first introduction to missions was when uh, I was serving as uh, international youth director for a denomination. Mm-hmm. And so I started traveling overseas. And I, I guess that's when missions kind of first got in my heart, mm-hmm. but when it really got, when unreached people mm-hmm. really got in my heart, uh, Peggy and I were directing a training school in London mm-hmm. for key experienced leaders from African, Asian, and Latin American countries. Mm-hmm. This was back in the Uh, late 1980s, early 90s. And at that time, we were teaching about unreached people Mm -hmm. in our school. We were one of the, I guess, early adapters to unreached people. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess that's when I first started exploring that. And, and that's when it got in my heart. Mm-hmm. And then after coming back, I, I was served as pastor for a while and then became an overseer over a little over a hundred churches in um, eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas, and southern Missouri. But I wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. Not, not too much administration, too much stuff that didn't really make a difference. Mm-hmm. And and so I, I was doing a master's degree at uh, a university and I had a course, most, they, well, let's say a unique course. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we say the most unique. <laughs> unique. It can only be unique. But a unique course called Destiny Processing. Huh. Mm. And this, this leader, um, teacher of the class, helped us go through our whole life, 
to think about what has God said to you? Mm -hmm. What what are Mm. passages of Scripture that have really stood out Mm -hmm. to you? What kinds of things do you wind up preaching and teaching Mm -hmm. on? Mm -hmm. Have there been any prophetic words spoken Mm -hmm. over you? Mm -hmm. What are your gifts and Mm -hmm. abilities? And he he just helped us go through that whole Mm -hmm. thing. But the last assignment was what changed my life. Mm. He said, I want you to imagine that you have all the money in the world. Mm -hmm. Money is no object. You can do anything in the world you want to do. Mm. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And that's when I, I wrote out the strategy for starting Uh, my missionary organization, Mm -hmm. Mission Catalyst International, Mm -hmm. that would focus on helping get the gospel Mm -hmm. to the three billion people Mm -hmm. who have never heard. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's my story. Yeah, Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's a great story. And what I love about that is there are so many different avenues that missions can take. Mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely. I I remember growing up, my idea of missions was when we would have missions month at Mm -hmm. church and Mm -hmm. there would always be a missionary from some faraway country. They would always bring bugs to eat and I never understood (laughs) why. (laughs) That never inspired me to be a missionary. Yeah, right. (laughs) But the point was always that missions was some faraway thing. Mm -hmm. But it seems like, and and I'm getting the sense that missions is wherever we are. Mm -hmm. And even your first trip, you said, Mm -hmm. one of the big ones was to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And and how we can find those mission fields wherever we're at. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that people can start getting involved in missions where they're at now? Mm -hmm. Whether that's local, abroad, or if someone is wanting an opportunity to take a step, what would you advise? Mm. volunteering Mm -hmm. absolutely with the church yes absolutely being uh equipped with believers walking alongside you learning from one another learning to do life together this is your community Mm -hmm. you're going to be together for however long god has you here Um, but volunteering stepping out committing to something we live in a busy culture yeah Mm -hmm. so much can steal our time but we do have time yeah and so prioritizing that time and well, rather reprioritizing. Mm-hmm. What do we want that to look like for our family? What do we look, want that to look like for us individually? Do we want to serve? Mm-hmm. Yes, we should. <laughs> sure. So where is that? Yeah. What is that? Where your heart grows, you yeah. know, where you where you feel led. Um, and with that, there's so many connections mm-hmm. that we have had the opportunity of making with people coming down to Honduras and visiting. There are connections all throughout the church mm-hmm. that people are involved yeah. in um, with different foreign missions, uh, you know, abroad and stuff locally here. We have so many centers here um, that you can get involved with uh, in Montgomery County. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity to yeah. serve right yeah. where we are. Yeah. I, I would say if you want to get involved in missions, first start praying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's where it starts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And start by praying for the people in your world yeah. that don't know Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm, I'm amazed wherever I go at how few people mm-hmm. are really interceding mm-hmm. for lost family, friends, and neighbors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So start there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then pray for missions. Mm-hmm. Um, you can become one of my intercessors. Send me your email address. And I'll put you on as as one of our intercessors, or come go with me on the trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think um, absolutely with prayer and connection. I mean, one part of ministry is in missions is you're doing it as the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. And so you need to be connected to the body of Christ. Yeah, I think trying to do it of your own or on your own. Uh, can seem exciting and thrilling in the beginning, but you can burn out and, and be isolated. Um, there's a, a Henry Nouwen um, t- compared culture to a shipwreck. Okay. And he talked about how first, as believers, we need to find safety. Mm-hmm. We need to find dry land. We need to find uh, a place of refuge. 
And that's the church where then from there, once we find, are able to find a place of hope and healing in life, we can then go back out into the shipwreck and bring people yeah. to the place of healing and safety and rescue. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you think about that, that might be going really close. That might be having to go really far back yeah. into it. And, and so we all have different ways that we do that, but it all starts from a place of connection, of health, of, of yeah. uh, prayer, of time in the word, of, mm -hmm. of allowing the Lord to bring healing. Um, and some of that healing comes in the midst of working like a progression, but a place of healing too, for where he can take a wound from your past and turn it into a powerful testimony and mm -hmm. a place that you can go and speak into situations, uh, speak into hurts that, uh, other people may not because you're, you're speaking from a place of personal testimony. This is what the Lord has done for me. Mm -hmm. You know, you can empathize yeah. with, I, I've been where you've been. And that's a, a powerful thing uh, to be able to do. Um, and then, you know, to be able to do that connected, that'll keep you strong. It'll, it'll keep you, um, going well and also allow the Lord to create that, you know, synergistic catalytic yeah. effect yeah. of, okay. Like we, I described, you know, one example of that going and seeing multiple ministries, all impacting the community yeah. from all different fronts, but all the way that the Lord has equipped doing the work he's called to for his glory and, and to, to bring the good news. Yeah. I think yeah. it's so important. What Jim said, prayer, mm -hmm. yeah. humongous. Sure. We did not go into the mission field and say yes to going without. Yeah, yeah sure. Without talking yes. to the Lord, without yeah. obviously his input and his leading, we have seen missionaries who are completely burnt out. Yeah, it's rough. Sure. It's hard. Yeah. And you know that they're probably not in a place to be serving. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we question, we wonder, should they even be out here on the mission field right now? Are they really blessing? Yeah. Are they really, is this what God had intended for them right mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. And yeah. as we've looked back on our 10 years, we have every huge, big moment of, I don't, can we do this, Lord? Is this what you want us to do? We've, yeah. we've gone to prayer. Mm -hmm. We've gone to scripture. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. You, you cannot do it otherwise. Yeah. 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 And a couple of thoughts um, about that. Uh, Michael was, was talking about the body of Christ, mm -hmm. being part of the body of Christ. That's what the church is. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the blessing of being a part of the church like the ark yeah. mm -hmm. that has a heart for the world yes. that supports missionary work mm -hmm. all over mm -hmm. the world. Yeah. That, that's a Huge. great blessing. Yes. And, um, and also what uh, you were talking about, about burnout, mm -hmm. you know, missionary work is hard, mm -hmm. Yeah. but life is hard. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and one thing the Lord constantly deals with me about <clears throat> is walking in the easy yoke mm -hmm. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus said, my yoke is easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we've got a yoke that's not easy, mm -hmm. it's coming from someplace mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we need to learn, all of us, to walk in that easy yoke, yeah, where, that's where you let him bear the brunt of mm -hmm. the burden mm -hmm. uh, and you walk yeah. with him. I think yeah. we, we learned that kind of halfway through our time yeah. as missionaries yeah. because, we, you know, again, you go in with this idea of, we're going to go save the world, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you get there yeah. and you're like, well, we don't have electricity. <laughs> yeah. We've got bugs falling on us mm -hmm. and we see through our walls and this yeah. is wow. where... You know, it just gets so real yeah. very quickly. Yeah. And <laughs> we often are, you know, that midway through, we had seen, oh, wow, we're not going to do that again. Yeah, We didn't yeah. pray through yeah. enough with that. Uh -huh. We didn't hear from the Lord or mm -hmm. we went before the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so we saw about halfway just really how we shifted our perspective and said, God, we're not going to step anywhere without you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We cannot yeah. do this alone and humbled ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had to. And we yeah. had the responsibility and the privilege of yeah. being a part of over 70 teenage girls' mm -hmm. lives wow. and who have impacted us in so many ways. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we have still connections with many of them today. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that God gave us enough wisdom that we listened to him 
in that halfway point to change things. Yeah. And to yeah. just, because it is where it is now. Yeah. Because of him. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Well, and it ties into what you said at the beginning, obedience. It's hard to be obedient to someone when you're in front of them, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But if we're following God and we're constantly saying, God, what do you want me to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The yoke does get easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's so great. Um, and I love, Michael, that you hit on the impact of several different ministries mm-hmm. showing up in the community together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us um, what some of those strategies look like that different missionaries use or have used? Because mm-hmm. I think where the rubber meets the road as far mm-hmm. as foreign missions goes can be kind of hard for us to grasp. What are yeah. some of the ways you guys have gotten into countries, Jim, or or tell us a little more about Casa de Esther and, and the ministry you guys do there. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think it's so fascinating the different avenues that missions can take. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, it's so diverse and uh, unique to each individual and, and being able to spend that time in prayer and, and yeah. receive from the Lord direction on, okay, this is how I've wired you. Mm-hmm. you know, um, Keith Moore came and I think it was a couple of years back did a part of his talk was uh, here at the church was about not comparing yourself mm-hmm. to other ministries, which happens often yeah. in missions. Cause you can be like, wow, look at the incredible work that Jim's doing. I want to be more like that. <laughs> yeah. Which to be able to honor and celebrate what God is doing, but then also recognize, well, I'm, I'm not like God yeah. has given me a mm-hmm. different assignment and I need to be uh, faithful mm-hmm. to that. Amen. And the size may look different. The the Good. scope, the place mm-hmm. may look different. And so one being rooted in that identity, but uh, the different forms that take shape for, for us, it was uh, uh, aftercare. So mm-hmm. after a girl is rescued out of, or um, pulled out of a situation of trafficking or abuse, mm-hmm. it's the, long journey of recovery to healing to restoration of her identity uh emotionally physically spiritually Mm -hmm. relationally uh, is there opportunity to work with the family to Mm -hmm. reconnect or if they were the perpetrators and there's not a a path to restoration uh building community and and almost being like a foster family in that interim up into adulthood and Mm -hmm. transitioning into a transition home and to the mid twenties, being able to go to university. Um, it was kind of whole person care is how we described that. Um, but, uh, again, that was just one component of what was being done in that country, uh, clean water projects, feeding programs, uh, medical Mm -hmm. brigades and medical, um, ministries that, along the way we all would reach out and partner with each other Mm -hmm. you know just the Mm -hmm. network of missionaries Mm -hmm. in a country uh you know as you were talking about unique one and just talking about obedience one ministry came here i had the opportunity to see if i remember right it was kingdom dogs um it was a gentleman who has raised dogs and he uses walks through a, a a program where he shows how the dog is obeying his words and his commands and he uses huh. it to teach the gospel wow. and the importance of obeying the Lord. You yeah. talk about a simple yeah. but powerful it's, reminder yeah. of, you know, uh, it's because God loves us yeah. Yeah. and he wants us to obey. He would not lead us into something that would mm-hmm. cause us harm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He knows how what our strengths are, how we're equipped. And if we will follow his every word, uh, yeah. because along the way there's, we're going to have to move and pivot and adjust mm-hmm. where, um, he needs us to. Yeah. And, and so just that obedience, uh, reminded me of that, but what a unique ministry. Yeah. Yeah. But does that mean I'm going to go try and chain up dogs? No, <laughs> probably because not. I would be probably, uh, <laughs> do a really bad job of conveying the gospel through that, but, yeah. uh, yeah. being able to be, uh, faithful to what God has equipped you in. And he, even what I'm doing now, it's, yeah. it's part yeah. of what I do is, is, uh, budgeting and finances or marketing and fundraising and, and just health. And that in itself, there's a uh, ministry to that because mm-hmm. it's an important part of ministries and missions being able to go forward. And so being okay at, and um, finding joy in that because it's, yeah. again, God has created you, uh-huh. you know, and, and Psalms talks about, you know, um, as you uh, seek the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart, you yeah. know, as you seek him, his desires can become your desires, but he, also with the way that he's wired you. And uh, yeah. he allows you to take great joy in being able to serve him. Yeah. And even in the times when it's rocky and hard and exhausting, yeah. Yeah. And you just feel, Lord, I'm so unequipped, ill-equipped. Uh, he just reminds you, well, it's not yeah. about your strength. It's about his. Huh. Um, you know, it's yeah. that dependence of on the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you talk about 
getting to see the Holy Spirit in action, you know, yeah. going into the mission field, you mm-hmm. realize you cannot go single step without dependence and wow. empowerment mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that obedience, you know, that is so crucial. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we all need to understand, I think, that the only way, at least I think, the only way you can really grow in Christ is by understanding what he says mm-hmm. and obeying. Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think our growth in Christ is directly proportional to our obedience. Mm-hmm. I would agree. If you obey little, you grow little. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you don't obey at all, you probably don't grow mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you if you obey much, you grow much. Mm-hmm. And that is so crucial in our life. And I've we've yeah. seen too those steps of obedience sometimes are small and then sometimes they're big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But as God has yeah. shown us, I mean he's so faithful. Yeah. He's so faithful. Yeah. He has taken care of us from the moment mm-hmm. that we were ever even part of his creation i mean so how can we not trust him yeah how can we not step into that and it has gotten easier yeah Mm -hmm. we would go at the drop of a hat if god said i want you to go here yeah we would do it and Mm -hmm. we'd take all our kids yeah no we did last year for an unknown unknown amount of time god said go to honduras and we're like okay well we don't know who's gonna rent our house or do we sell it it? do we (laughs) what do we do with our stuff But God miraculously moved in that situation and brought everything exactly where it needed to be so that we were able to go and be there with our children. And some people called us crazy. Mm -hmm. What are you doing taking four kids? You just had a baby. Your arm's broken. (laughs) Mm -hmm. If God says we're going because it's not about us, it's not about Mm -hmm. you and your opinion and and what your fear is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your fear is not something that I am going to listen to. Yeah. I will listen to the Lord and where he's mm-hmm. calling. I trust him yeah. with yeah. all of my heart. Yeah. And I've seen what he's done, not in only in yeah. my life, yeah. but other accounts. Mm-hmm. And I have to trust that. Yeah. 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 I have to trust that and I have to yeah. obey that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and that's the essence of faith. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's what faith is. Faith is trusting God. He's our gracious loving yes. heavenly father yes. he's a million times smarter than we yes. are <laughs> thank you lord and 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 that that that's what it means mm-hmm. to yeah. to have faith mm-hmm. yeah is you trust yeah. it mm-hmm. whatever happens mm-hmm. whatever happens you trust it. absolutely yeah. wow well i've enjoyed i mean there's just such a real sense of you guys can tell there's a joy from you guys about what you get mm-hmm. to do um, could you just share here at the end just one story that just sticks out to you? I know <laughs> it's been you've been everywhere, you've been doing this for years. Maybe one story that just comes to mind of this is when I realized, like, or recognize that God is moving <laughs> right now mm-hmm. through my act of obedience. Yeah. Does anything stand out to you? You get. Mm. There's so many. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm putting you on the um, spot. I don't, uh, well, one story that I had on my heart, I, I think is just an example of how missions can, can look a lot of different ways. And, mm-hmm. and that's of a couple that we've gotten to know here at the church, uh, Don and Debbie. Mm. And uh, they, we first got to meet them in a missions class that uh, wow. Jim and us got to teach <laughs> together. Yeah. And uh, we were surprised when they kept showing up because we're like, we feel like we're awful teachers. <laughs> uh, but uh, they, just uh, to see then how they got involved with volunteering yeah. and Don working as a, a greeter and with arc info and then debbie starting to volunteer with art kids uh-huh. um and just to see them plug in and yeah. grow and get to grow in a relationship well come you know not full circle because it's still life is still going but uh when we were down in honduras last year as a family they came on the mission team with project playground and it was just a beautiful time mm-hmm. where you know god got to remind us the beauty of doing missions and life together yeah. you know connected here through the church and our kids being out yeah. getting to build playgrounds with the project playground team and building new relationships and and developing those and um it's just a reminder of you know the 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 beauty of doing life together uh, as part of a church uh, on on mission with the lord and uh how there's a, a strength 
and beauty and um, doing that together for his glory and um, in, in life and, and community together and, and just building good friendships along the way, mm-hmm. ones that continue and, and be able to be sharpened and learn from each other and grow with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, it's, it's just a, a humbling opportunity to be a part of and uh, excited for what the Lord will continue to do through the ark. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of stories. Um, for me, as uh, I became a mom on the mission field, mm. and uh, I felt very lacking mm-hmm. because I'm like, I'm a first time mom, I'm on the mission field, mm. I don't have my support. I don't know what to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. wow. um, and I don't have all the stuff that I need for a baby. It was hard to find a crib. And and, and, and we weren't living. We lived in what we call the La Casita, the love shack. <laughs> love shack. Is what it was oh, what we love nicknamed shack. it. 200 square feet. <laughs> this is 200, wow. We could, we could cook and sit and <laughs> yeah. touch our bed all at the same time <laughs> while bugs were falling on us. And, um, and, and we got to bring our baby girl in there uh-huh. for the very, very first time. And it always reminded me of Jesus wow. and how he was birthed and obviously in conditions that were far worse than yeah. my baby, our baby in Honduras. But it reminded me so much of what I'm doing here as a mom is helping be an example to these girls. Uh-huh. Because our girls, some of their moms abandoned them families abandon them yeah some of their moms abuse them physically and other ways they had no hope in family they had no hope in what that would look like Hmm. and i didn't realize all my hurts and pains and the things i was struggling with as a new mom on the mission field and i mean just a new mom in general um that someone else was watching me Mm -hmm. and the girls got to hold our baby for the first time they haven't some of them had never held a baby Mm -hmm. they were unsure how to and god used Mm -hmm. us as a family to be there just just (laughs) with all of our insecurities Mm -hmm. and all of our um (laughs) big imperfections imperfections (laughs) Mm -hmm. and not knowing what to do and looking a mess and being tired and everything in the in the heaviness of it all yeah jesus Mm -hmm. wow yeah and him working through that mm-hmm. and watching our girls become moms mm-hmm. and um, seeing that restored is like one of the most beautiful mm-hmm. things. And God could have used anybody, but chose chose us at the time uh, to be that example. Mm-hmm. And it's always oh. etched in my heart. And with each baby that we've mm-hmm. had, you know, I'm reminded this is part of what discipleship looks like Hmm. being a mother loving them be an example to other people Mm -hmm. in the thick of it all not having it all figured out but just trusting the lord and knowing he's equipping me he has given me these four children for a reason during this time in our world today Mm -hmm. and he's going to use them and he's going to use us and and that's why i know right now he has us Mm -hmm. where we are and we are grateful for that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's another thing that mission life teaches you about gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. You are grateful for everything that you have. We do not look at our lives the same. Mm-hmm. We don't look at people the same. We don't look at God's creation the same. Yeah. Electricity, water, all the things that we have, we are very, very thankful mm-hmm. and very mm-hmm. mindful to give God the praise for it all because yeah. he deserves it. He's so worthy. We wouldn't be yeah. what we are without him. Wow. And one of those trips, um, we felt really guilty. It was a shorter trip, and we mm-hmm. were like you know, wrangling the chaos of trying to keep at the time three kids in, in line. And uh, you know, the scripture says, "Do everything you do for the glory of God." We mm-hmm. were not focused on that in the moment. <laughs> we were like, "Let's just not uh, let things go to complete chaos." But at the end of the week, you know, we were feeling like ah, we did not get to spend as much time with the girls this trip as, mm-hmm. as we wanted to. And it was just a, a sweet reminder and blessing. Um, one of them shared at the end of the week, you know, we were watching how you love your kids. Mm-hmm. And 
we recognize the way you love them and discipline and correct them is the same way that you do with us wow. and the yeah. caretakers do with us. And it was just a, a beautiful, humbling reminder of how people are watching yeah. and that you can reflect Jesus um, in every situation and, and even in what you feel like is your weakness, just that um, God can use to, to re reflect his love to others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So you got time for one story? I've got time for story <laughs> one more from you, Jim. I always got time for a story from you, Do you, you Jim. want just a normal story no, come or on. one that will raise the hair on the back I tell of your you, neck? <laughs> I'll let you choose. Okay. I believe you know okay. what we let me, let me tell you a couple of stories. Okay. Both of these happened in India, in the state of Punjab. India is most people know as a Hindu country. Uh -huh. It Their whole life is built around worshiping demons. Mm -hmm. And so demon possession is very common mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. in those areas. So mm -hmm. we were uh, sitting around, I was talking with uh, a pastor there. We were getting ready to do an afternoon meeting and uh, all of a sudden somebody comes up and whispers in the ear of the pastor he says there's a girl out here that needs prayer mm -hmm. and he said okay bring her on in he's used to working with people that are demonic mm -hmm. and so he brings in this strikingly beautiful young indian girl mm -hmm. maybe 22 23 mm -hmm. years of age mm -hmm. And she says, um, I need prayer. Mm. And so he lays his hand on her and she falls down flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, like somebody shot her. Wow. And she starts writhing mm. like a snake. Mm -hmm. wow. I've never seen anything like that. And, and her family worships Nog, who who is the snake god, mm -hmm. huh. and and this girl is writhing, making contortions yeah. that are impossible right. for the yeah. human body. Mm -hmm. So we all gather around. We pray for her. She did not get delivered at that mm -hmm. point. Some some demonic possession mm -hmm. is much deeper than yeah. others, uh -huh. but. My friend uh, called me a couple of weeks later and said the woman is now totally mm. delivered wow. and her wow. whole family has mm. come um, to Christ. Wow. Amazing. Praise God. Another story that, that happened, I, I, I was doing some training in Punjab and we were talking about God's power and the pastor said, I want you to sit down right here. I'm going to bring somebody in here, mm -hmm. and I want you to hear his story. Okay, this this pastor pastored a little rural village church in the state of Punjab, and there was a couple of Hindu people that had been trying to have a baby for a long time. Mm -hmm were not successful. Mm. Tried everything, tried witch doctors, whatever. So they came to this humble pastor and they said, we want you to pray for us that we could have a baby. Mm. He said, I'd love to mm -hmm. because God loves babies. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he laid his hand on that couple and about, I don't know, a year, 18 months later, they had a beautiful mm. baby. Hmm. Wow. Wow. And that, um, they, of course, that baby boy was mm. their heart and soul. Mm. But the rest of the story is when that baby boy was about two years old, he contracted a serious lung disease mm. and died. Mm. Oh. The parents brought their dead child in their arms. Mm. They came to this pastor and they dumped their dead child in his arms. Well. 
And they said to him, they asked him, is that the kind of God you serve? Wow. wow. That gives children and then takes them away. That pastor told me, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I didn't know what to say. Mm -hmm. I, I had no words. Mm -hmm. But he said, I started weeping. Mm -hmm. Tears of compassion mm -hmm. flowing down mm -hmm. his cheeks. Mm -hmm. And what happened? He's holding this child. Mm. And when the tears of compassion mm. dropped on that child, oh that child was raised wow. from the dead. Wow. That, he mm. said that child Incredible. jumped in my arms. Wow. He said, I did not even mm. know what was happening. All, all I <laughs> could do was look down and see this child is oh alive. And he said, the, the parents had started walking back home, oh. leaving him holding their dead child. And he shouted at them. He said, come back, come back. Oh and he gosh. ran to mm. them and put this living child back in their arms. Incredible. And he said, that's the kind Amen. of God I that's serve. Right. Wow. Amen. So, oh what my a God. story. I tell you, God is so yes, amazing. Is. Agreed. Amen. Wow. Amen. I should have stopped you at one, Jim. <laughs> uh, you're the first person to make me cry on the podcast. Um, well, I just want to circle back at the in, end here because I love how we started. Missions boils down to obedience. Yeah. And your lives have demonstrated yeah. that. Um, Jim, obviously, your life has demonstrated mm -hmm. that. And I want to tie it back to something you said at the top, Jim. People who want to get involved, you would advise them to pray. Yeah. How can our listeners pray for Mission Catalyst and your ministry, how can our listeners pray for Casa de Esther or any missionary mm -hmm. around the world? Mm -hmm. How can they pray? Well, um, we, we have a list of intercessors, mm -hmm. people who have committed to pray for us because prayer is our life. Mm -hmm. So I would say if anybody would pray about that and mm -hmm. You feel that God would have you do that, send me your email. Mm -hmm. I'll put you on our list mm -hmm. of intercessors. And we send out regular letters mm -hmm. about needs for prayer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that's one thing yeah. mm -hmm. they could do. That's great. Yeah. You know, with Radiate Coalition, uh, working with girls who have been victims of abuse and, mm -hmm. and uh, have survived that the heart is to help them not only survive but come to a place of abundant life and, and to thrive and to truly walk in freedom not just from the oppression but from the hurt and the wounds and and see life restored and so um while the work is acasa Esther is in honduras mm -hmm. um, part of that has created a model uh, for whole person care that brings the best practices from uh, what the world would say psychology, but, mm -hmm. uh, through the filter of, well, it started with scripture, it started with God, how God wired us. And so, uh, what we've learned through psychology and in some aspects of applicable to trauma informed care is really a reflection and based on scripture that we apply there. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's a mix of biblical counseling and the psychology care, plus the whole person, all the domains of their life. Uh, but a model that is, uh, refined through the years and, and there's such a need worldwide and even here in the U S and so radiate coalition is, is continuing the work in Honduras. Um, sometimes when you're doing a work in a, a country that's far away, it's out of sight, out of mind, right? Mm -hmm. We don't, uh, here in the U S we don't always have a understanding of what life is or, uh, are able to empathize fully with the tremendous injustices or mm -hmm. the, uh, the simplicity of if you pick up the phone to call the police doesn't mean anybody's coming. Mm -hmm. You know, if you there, if you stand up to say you were a victim of trafficking or abuse, less than 5% of cases are ever investigated or mm -hmm. prosecuted. Wow. Uh, it puts a, a target on your back. And so you're more likely to be killed by wow. the abuser than, than helped. And so why would you ever speak up? Yeah. And so there's, wow. um, working there where the need is so great, but also, in the process of how that can be applied, even here in the U S uh, there's very few aftercare programs in the United States. And so radiate coalition is working to raise awareness and 
uh, prayerfully believing that the Lord may open doors for mm-hmm. care here in the U.S. Also, um, in India, uh, exploring uh, relationships that we've been able to train a program there. Mm-hmm. And so uh, continuing forward under uh, leadership of, of an incredible staff there, uh, people that we've got to do life with over the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. And so prayer over those on the front lines, the, the caregivers in the day in, day out of, of being the representation of Christ uh, to these girls and, and to those who have come through and those who are still to come uh, over the leadership of mm-hmm. and for the resourcing of mm-hmm. partnerships, of mm-hmm. funding, uh, mm-hmm. because it takes funding. Yeah, and it's... That's a, a critical part, you know, prayerfully being able to support. We're so thankful for the way that the Ark Church has, mm-hmm. has such a heart for supporting missions. Amen. Uh, mm-hmm. But to learn more, uh, radiatecoalition.org. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, for us, we're, we're here. Uh, I work with uh, truefast.co is, is what I work with as a consultant working with nonprofits. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if there's ever an opportunity to be able to help uh, move your mission forward, I'm, I'm happy to help in that way and uh valina just praying over uh her work with the school and the Mm -hmm. it's been amazing to see the impact um her interactions with the kids sometimes the ones being sent up to the office in trouble just Mm -hmm. the the grace and love and encouragement she can give in those moments uh, it's a powerful thing Yeah. yeah and i think lastly just uh praying for uh Specific countries, I think, if there's yeah. a, something led on your heart yeah. from the Lord, mm-hmm. you know, learn about that country. Mm-hmm. Ask the Lord, why is yeah. this place on my heart? What connection is this, Lord? Yeah. Uh, because there are missionaries everywhere. Yeah. And the Lord will connect you if that's where He wants you to be. And I think just being open to that and praying for that, to praying about that. Um, and then if you ever have questions, I mean, mm-hmm. there's an abundance of people yeah. mm-hmm. here that. Now we can tell some more crazy stories yeah. or <laughs> oh, yeah. some other the, heartfelt stories. One of the joys we have, and it goes back to that uniqueness, like is uh, come have a conversation with us because we're not going to ever try and twist your arm into, oh, well, sure. you've got to do work with what, what we're doing yeah. is yeah. the yeah. big picture. Yeah. No, what we're doing is a little piece of the big picture. Yeah. And we want individuals to be able to run in their calling and their passions that God has gifted them. And so a great joy is being able to be like, well, you know, this is what we do or this is what we've been involved in. But actually based on what you're telling me, I think I know this person Mm -hmm. that I need to get you in touch with. And we've had ministries do that with us. And it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Just it's the body of Christ in action. Yeah. Yeah. And, and something Valena said there about, about praying for specific things. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another idea is uh, there is an organization called Joshua Project Mm -hmm. that that, uh, oversees or tracks ministry among unreached people. Mm -hmm. And every day they put out what is called an unreached people of the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the, their website is joshuaproject.org. Mm-hmm. And you can go there and click on that. You can even download it and it'll pop up each day mm-hmm. and unreach people of the day that you can pray for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So yeah. that, that's a great yeah. thing mm-hmm. that's to great. do. Mm-hmm. And I, I would encourage people also, if they're interested, to check out the Mission Catalyst mm-hmm. website. Mm-hmm. We have lots of stuff on that. Mm-hmm. And that address is MCI3, the number three, mm-hmm. dot org. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. great. Thank you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just Jim. being able to w- wake up each day and pray, Lord, how would you use me today? Yeah. Let me walk in yeah. faith. Yeah. 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 Which Amen. goes back to, again, yeah. missions is obedience. The root of missions yeah. is just, mm-hmm. God, yeah. what do you want me to do yeah. where I'm at mm-hmm. right now? to yep. follow you. Mm-hmm. Um, Jim, Valina, Michael, it has been an honor to sit down with you guys. I could sit here all day and talk to y'all, so we will have to have <laughs> you guys back. But thank you guys Good. very much thank for you. being on. Um, and I hope you guys join us next time on Friends You Can Grow With. Mm-hmm.